So I'm going to share a little bit uh, about myself at this point in time and a little bit about the outline for flow. Uh, my background is working as a consultant and a coach and a trainer and a mentor. Uh, and that's just in the last 25 years. And I've been working with this for a long time. I have a ton of certifications. Feel free to look at my LinkedIn profile uh, to get a better feel for some of the things that I've worked with and achieved during the last quarter of a century. And <clears throat> in addition to my professional life and my private life, I've been married for a long time, uh, 35 years. I have three grown children uh, who live here in Scandinavia. They're all married and have three grandsons as well. So that's enough about me. Uh, we'll get into the what's included in flow. One of the feedbacks that I got from one of the teams that did the first test drives of this online course was that it would be really good to include the learning objectives for each section. So almost every section is going to be bookended with these um, slides. Uh, they're going to be color-coded, so they're going to be these uh, light teal in the background. And so it'll be easy for you to identify that it's either the leadership takeaways, which is the learning objectives up front, or it's going to be uh, the recap with application at the end of the section and at the end of the video. And so we resorted the videos. And in this section, uh, for introductions, I'm going to uh, share a little bit about the origin of flow. We're going to look at the definitions of flow and uh, flow defined as both a mindset tool set and most importantly that it is methodology agnostic. The origin of flow spans almost five decades, but flow itself, where it was first distilled into a frame framework and models that could be duplicated and reused. That really began in 1995 to 1997 with a project on which Ted, my brother Dan, and myself, and a whole bunch of other people were working on delivering that project. And the results of that project that were audited by the customer's internal auditing team from finance, so completely other team outside of our team came in and said, yeah, the results of this project first year after launch were $29.6 million net net. I mean, that's like as if we had increased their sales by hundreds of millions of dollars. Okay. So that's when we sat back, did a retrospective and said, oh my goodness, we've got something that flat out works. Okay, now a little bit more history lesson here. Uh, the original spark for flow was something that Ted called the model that he learned at college way back in 1972. And from that, he got the one language, one mind, one plan framework or model. And he, he called it simply the model. Okay, and that was from 72. About 10 years later in 83, uh, or somewhere between 80 and 83, I picked up the first three R's of the 4R model when I was studying at the university. And I added the fourth model, or the fourth R, to the 4R model in the mid-90s. Okay. Also, uh, the other day I was sorting through some drawers and looking at papers, and I ran across the handwritten copy of the 4D model from 1999, 21 years ago. And by the way, the 4R model, the right truth, right values, attitudes, right actions, right results, is actually the 
uh, predecessor to the 4D model. The 4R model is what we would use to work with the individual, or it's what I still use to work with individuals, while the 4D model is what I would use to work with teams. It's um, define, distill, deliver, and drive. So those two models are mirror images of themselves stated in slightly different ways, one to be used with individuals and one to be used with teams. Now the VST, VSPT model that I uh, mentioned earlier, that was the original version was actually from the early 90s. It was used by Newt Gingrich to power his Republican Revolution. After Bill Clinton got elected in 92, Newt Gingrich took over the House and the Senate in the Congress, both houses. He took them over using VSPT, which came from, at that point in time, West Point Military Academy. And it was vision, strategy, projects, and tactics in that form. As we applied that to the steel case project in 95, which is in our book. It's one of the case studies in flow. As we applied VSPT to that, my observation was as well, the P and T don't actually match to what we're doing here. In reality, when you're working with projects, the key thing in every project is having the right people. And so I switched the uh, VSPT to vision strategy people and tasks. What is it that the people are doing? Because if you have the right people doing the right things at the right time, hopefully in the right way, you should get the right results, right? <laughs> okay, so that was a, a change that I made in the mid-90s after working with the um, steel case project. So we distilled it into its current form back then, and it's been that way ever since. Now, we started using flow around the name flow around 2013, 2014. It was really an acronym that I came up with that stood for uh, Focus Led Organization. And it just sort of FLO, just sort of in caps, looked sort of funny. <laughs> so uh, over time, it morphed into just the word flow. And then the title of our book, Get Everyone Moving in the Right Direction and Loving It, uh, also came out a few years later when we published Flow. But the first group of Flow certified professionals trained in Stockholm, Sweden, was done back in the spring of 2014. By the way, Flow has been known by a number of names, and a few of those include the Unified Vision Framework, the VSBT model, and the Simply Wall model. So it's had a few names down through the last couple of decades, but for more than the last five years, it's been known as Flow. In my book, Flow, in chapter one, I defined Flow as the state of optimal performance achieved by applying a clear, consistent, persistent, and unified vision at all levels of an organization. And on the next slide, you're gonna see that we simplified that. And uh, as with all visions and definitions, this is continually evolving and transforming into a more concise and better um, definition as we move along. By chapter nine in my book, I shortened the definition to the optimal state of high performance. And so what happens is flow enables you to achieve and sustain higher levels of performance individually, as a team, and as an organization. And so if you look at the uh, green text that I have here in the bullet point, achieve and sustain higher levels of performance, that's basically the vision for flow to help you do that. Our mission is teaching you the what and the how 
and helping you duplicate the results. And our purpose and higher purpose is that we pursue excellence and we like to help others do the same. And so that's basically the goal of flow. If you've watched some of the other uh, presentations that I've done and recorded and shared on YouTube, you'll notice that this is a new slide. I expanded the definition to include that flow includes the mindset and tool set that you need in order to take whatever you're doing and make it even better. So it, it includes leadership models and leadership frameworks in flow. And we're going to look at a couple of those today in this presentation. Now, something that I really want to hammer home is flow is methodology agnostic. It's easy to integrate into what your whatever other methodologies, frameworks you may already be using, like Agile Scrum, change management, traditional waterfall, Agile PMOs, uh, SAFE, which is Scaled Agile Framework, or Agile Portfolio Management, or whatever you're doing. Uh, even, yeah, it, whatever leadership style you have, or uh, the strategies that you use as a leader in order to lead and motivate your teams, understand that flow helps all of these different things play nice together as one of the early participants in the flow training mentioned about four or five years ago. And so uh, just keep in mind flow is methodology agnostic but it will help whatever you're doing achieve higher and better results. You now know a little more about the origin of flow and the definitions that we've used for flow. For me, it's always a little humorous that in uh, the first chapter, we were a little long-winded and we broke our own rule about keeping definitions short, memorable, and easy to communicate. And so in the, uh, uh, that was in the first chapter of the book. It's uh, like almost a short paragraph. In chapter 9, we, we broke it down to the optimal state of high performance. And as we move forward, we're going to share the formula for how you do that. Okay? And uh, so it's really important to understand that we're including mindset as well as tool sets in this training. If you only walk away from flow thinking that it's only a tool set, then you've completely missed the mark. And it's really important, and I'll reemphasize this probably over and over again, may sound like a little like a broken record, flow is methodology agnostic. To apply this, the thing that you can depend on is Ted and I, plus a whole bunch of other people, have spent a quarter of a century together honing this, and distilling it down to easy to remember, easy to communicate models and frameworks that you can use immediately in your daily work. And they're simple. Now, remember, simple is not easy. And we're going to talk about that again further down in some of the other videos. Mindset is equally as important as tool set. I can't emphasize enough that it's not just using flow as the tools. You can, you can just go ahead and follow and, and do the methods, but until you internalize it and come up that aha curve where you really understand it, and it's not just muscle memory anymore, but you really get the depth of what it is that we're communicating, that's going to take you to higher and higher levels of performance. So whatever you need um, to use to lead your organization, whatever it is, it needs to be methodology agnostic because otherwise 
uh, you're going to end up with traditionalists and agilists, for example, uh, having minor skirmishes or all-out wars with each other, creating unnecessary politics within the organization. By the way, uh, the main course here is free up until the point that you decide that you want to do the certification. Uh, of course, there's a fee to do that. But we have a value-add package that we're working on that is going to include live facilitated Zoom sessions with experts. So it will be experienced flow coaches and or experienced flow certified trainers, may even be a small group of them, that get together and will answer your questions once a week in a live uh, facil facilitator-led session. Uh, we have tested this with the first test drive group, and the feedback on that was extremely positive. But this is a value-add service, and we're, we're looking at how to price that as well. So there'll be a link in Moodle uh, once that part is up and running. For the test drive groups, you'll get the test drive that. So... Uh, we're looking forward to being able to do that.